Today I want to show you how to make spaghetti squash. It's um, a fantastic replacement for you know, pasta if you're giving up processed carbohydrates like that, which I definitely would recommend for you to do. Um, in case you're going paleo or if you're avoiding grains, if you want to add some color to your life and your diet and your plate, then this is a really wonderful recipe. In my earlier video today, I made a pesto. So if you're watching this on YouTube or my blog or some other place on Instagram, perhaps, then do look up the pesto recipe. And it just literally took me half an hour to make that, including all the talking that I was doing. So how do you, there's really not much making that we need to do with a spaghetti squash. Um, so I wanna just show you one trick that I discovered completely by accident. I spaced out and instead of cutting the squash, right, the spaghetti squash horizontally, so this way, I spaced out and I cut it this way, just diagonally across, right? And it turned out to be the best thing ever because I'll show you the way of getting, the, the, basically the strings are so much longer. So really not much to show except for the fact that I'm just gonna cut it in half. I like typically like to dive in with a knife in first and then get it going a lot of times it just cracks up cracks um, on its own pretty quickly so <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is get the seeds out and um, you know quite frankly uh, I I don't I can't be bothered with the seeds in terms of keeping them because I just don't have the patience for uh, roasting them but a lot of people would roast them like you can roast them you know with um, some um, soy sauce tamari um, paprika, salt, etc., etc. Really wonderful addition to like you sitting in front of TV and just munching away. But of course, it's gonna be <clears throat> they're gonna be in their house, right? So it's just for those of you who like to sit and crunch something on something while watching TV. That's a really great way of uh, doing something with them. I'm just gonna compost them because it's just not my thing. But. Um, let me just get the seeds out of the way. And uh, so I'm wondering who here has made sp spaghetti squash before? And what's your favorite way of eating that spaghetti squash? I'm curious. So let's, um, that's, that's pretty much that's all you need to do. And preheat your oven to 400 Fahrenheit. And um, you do the same thing with the other side. I don't need to show you that. Uh, put them down. You want to get the paper off because otherwise it's going to get burned. So 400 Fahrenheit. What's also very helpful is to grease your squash with a bit of either olive oil or avocado oil. It doesn't really matter. Otherwise it's going to kind of shrink, you know, not in a very nice way. And when you grease it this way, then it's just going to retain it's nice uh, texture on the outside. And I would typically roast it for 45 minutes to an hour to really get the full benefit and make it really soft and easy to get things out. So pre pretty much, um, yes, not in a while. Um, I have to cook one this weekend. Awesome, great. So hey you guys, so that's pretty much it. That's, that's all we have to do. You pop that into your oven, 400 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes to an hour, and that's pretty much it. So that's one thing. Now when you, one thing I wanna, one trick, so I've already done that earlier today in the morning. And one of, one of the things I wanna actually show you is a little, a little trick that I, I try, and as always, I experiment, including on live broadcasts, where I don't know where things are gonna go, but that's part of the fun. So can you see what I've put down there underneath, underneath the, uh, the squash? It's basically your star anise. And so the cool thing about also putting these squashes down is that the, the water from within the squash cook, cooks the squash pretty quickly. And so, and then on top of that, then the water all gets back in again, so it kind of keeps cooking it. So when you have something as flavorful as star anise, then you end up having the whole squash smelling like star anise. If you like cinnamon, put cinnamon. If you like peppermint, put peppermint. Whatever is your fancy. And I can tell you right away that it does smell wonderful. It does smell, 
it did catch it on. So the experiment worked and I would highly recommend trying it just to add a little bit of a variation to your cooking. But so I'm curious, what would you put underneath the spaghetti squash to get some additional flavor? I did star anise, wondering what would you do that would t take your fancy. So, um, you know, getting the spaghetti squash out is really simple. All you do is just take a fork and start doing this. Now, those are the real noodles now coming out. Can you see? Um, one of the cool things about it, garlic, that's a great idea. Uh, Jay is saying, awesome, got some great people on the call today. So this is, you pretty much, that's all you do. And so the cool thing about cutting it diagonally is that the noodles are much longer than when you put it, when you cut it horizontally, right? So, and then I'll just go around. I'm, fa I'm trying to face the camera so I look a little clumsy. Typically I will do it just on the side. Um, for a big squash like that, typically half would feed one person to one and a half. Um, a smaller squash like the one I cut out earlier, that would easily, half squash will do one person. So basically one small squash for two people. Basically that's your... Okay, so I'm gonna just end here. And um, this is, this is you guys, this is actually what I'm gonna have for lunch today. So I selfishly decided to make this video to show you also what I'm gonna have for lunch. I'm thinking, I'm making lunch, so I might as well, you know, cook something that I can use to show you and use it as a video for my blog and YouTube channel and all the good stuff. So that's gonna be lunch. It's gonna be these wonderful spaghetti squash noodles. I'm gonna have and for those of you who watched my early episode is um, that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding um, I'm just gonna basically have it with some pesto on top and this pesto in case you haven't watched the earlier episode uh, look for the video on YouTube on Facebook on Instagram that says the herbal pesto recipe that I totally improvise so don't ask me for the recipe I want to teach you how to improvise and uh, this has got walnuts, dandelion leaves, parsley, cilantro, and a lot of basil. So that's gonna be going on top right here. And maybe a little bit more. And that's going to be, you know, my beautiful, colorful fall lunch for today. That literally just took a few minutes to prepare. Um, Cincinnati chili, I'm not sure. Kathy is saying, I'm not sure what is that in relationship to, but um, sounds like chili. That's something that sounds wonderful, uh, especially in, a, in this, this cold. All right, you guys, so really simple recipe, super, super nutritious, um, just so much of really good stuff to help support your liver, support the bile production, support, you know, so many really great nutrients with the walnuts, omega-3s, you've got the vitamin K2. I mean, the list just goes on. You, you know, so many of us are taking supplements and are chasing for the next miracle shake and powder. This is your medicine. All right, that's it for me for today, and I'll see you.